All right, so the question, does God exist? Well, we are going to look. Well, and here, here's something even harder. What if somebody you knew said, you know what, I don't believe God, unless you can prove that he exists. And you're like, well, what would you say? Would you be like, well, the Bible tells me so. Is that what you would say? No. How many of you guys would say that? I'd say, well, the Bible says he exists. See, when I was your age, everybody in the room would raise their hand. That's how much further society has moved away. They don't believe the Bible anymore. If you tell somebody, hey, well, the Bible tells me so, you know what they're going to say? You might even be saying, I don't believe your Bible. Why should I believe your Bible, right? Well, God knew that we would have these questions, believe it or not. And um, tonight we're going to look at the existence of God, but I want you to know that in Romans, God talks about this. Let me turn to Romans chapter 1. Verses 19 and 20, it says, For what can be known about God is plain to man, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made so that they are without excuse. What God is saying is that, you know what, you don't need the Bible to prove that God exists. All you have to do is look at his creation, so you know what? To help us illustrate that, I'm, I, I do need I need uh, I'm gonna I'm I need uh, somebody to help me. Actually, I'm so convinced that I'm gonna beat you guys. I need two. I need two. You guys to beat me. You need. You're my son. We'll do this a second later. Uh, okay, you. I don't know your name, so I'm just gonna point and say you. And I want somebody that didn't raise their hand. Somebody's reluctant. Who is it? Don't make eye contact. I'm a, I'll pick you out of the crowd. Who's looking down? Who's that? What's their name? Yeah, oh, come on up. Let's go. Yeah, come on. All right, big round of applause. All right, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. On your table, here, you come on. You guys are going to work together because I'm going to beat both of you. So you're on this table. I'm going to take this back because this, this is my secret. This is my weapon, my, my secret weapon. Okay, so on your table, you have eight marshmallows, and you have eight toothpicks. So what I want you to do is build me a cube, okay? Actually, you're going to need more toothpicks than that. You're going to need another four toothpicks. Two, three, four. So if you... Okay, so you guys have, you got, hey, don't, I say go. You're cheating over there. I got my eye on you. No wonder you raised your hand. All right, so this, this is what we're going to do. We're going to race, and I'm going to win because I have a secret weapon. It's called a brown paper bag and chance because I'm lucky. So you're going to build a cube as fast as you can build it, Okay. But I have the exact same ingredients, four marshmallows, eight marshmallows, and 12 toothpicks. Okay, so when I say go, you're going to build a cube, and I'm going to race you, and then the first one done wins, okay? And the winner gets to take a marshmallow. <laughs> Ready, set, go. <laughs> I'm already done. All done. No. No, it's already done. I don't want to break it. I have to wait. Look at how slow they are. <laughs> you guys, I will bet you a dollar that it is, it is already done. Oh, man, look at, hey, look at how they did that. They're working as a team. Man. Had you guys had random chance, you would have won. I'm just saying. All right, good job. All right, well, that's second place because mine, you know, like yours doesn't even stand. Mine stands. Oh, wait a minute. Well, now, why didn't mine work? Why didn't mine work? 
So what's, wait a minute, wait a minute, because I know you guys, Matt told me you guys were super bright. That means smart. I don't know if you're bright enough to figure that out. <laughs> so why didn't mine work? What's the difference between these? It's like evolution. You can't just throw random things in a bag. Wait a minute, you're jumping ahead. You're way too smart. I got to go over here. This is room. I need, I need like a, I need like a sixth grader. Luke, why didn't that work? No, that's gravity. Okay, so really, if we look at this, th what? Because they work together. What they do, they put their minds together to build this structure, right? So when you see this, you can tell that it was put together, right? What did, what did I do? Where did I go wrong? I just kind of threw it together, right? Random chance. Does this look like, like I got one toothpick in there? That's pretty cool. See, there's evidence it could have worked if I did it long enough. Okay, so in this, so what you see is that this is intelligent design, right? And this is just random chaos. Okay, so if this had come out of my bag when I dumped it, that would have been pretty amazing, right? Because it wouldn't have been constructed with thought or reason, right? Thank you guys, you can sit down. So you can take a marshmallow. I'm <laughs> sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here, okay. Okay. Last one. All right. Hey. All right. Um, one more. I'll, I'll throw them as we go. Okay. As long as you're paying attention. Okay. So this is what I mean. The Bible tells us through God's creation, we can tell that God exists. Man is without excuse. So that's what we're going to be looking at tonight is that through looking at God's creation, we can see that God does exist. So, it's funny. How many of you guys know, raise your hand if you know who Charles Darwin is. Okay, so most of you have heard of him. He was, he's the guy that came up with the idea that random behavior will create as it goes along. Okay, so, uh, but even he can, would acknowledge that looking at his theory was kind of ludicrous. This is his quote. It says, to suppose that the human eye, with all of its inimit in inimitable contrivances, that's a big word, he's smarter than I am, for adjusting the focus to different distances, for admitting different amounts of light, and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aberration could have been formed by natural selection, seems, I confess, absurd in the highest degree. He was saying, even if I look at evolution, it seems absurd. Just because if you look at an eye or at an ear, you look at how complex it is for it to work. Like, how does an eye know that it needs to perceive light if it's never been instructed what light is? Do you see? Something had to go, no, I want the eyeball to receive light and create sight. Just like this was a, this was a cube that was designed same thing with the eyeball in the ear. How would you know that sound exists if you've never had an eardrum to be able to hear it? Do you see what I mean? So these things he would point at and say, you know what, to, to assume that an ear just formed is foolish, okay? Let's look at math, because math doesn't care how you feel. Ma and I know you guys, I hated math growing up. I know you probably do. Unless you like math and you're a freak. But if I take two and I add it to it, let's keep it super simple. For two plus two equals five, right? Like you can't, wait, no, that's 21. So two plus two equals what? If I put them together, it makes four. Now, if I have two apples and two apples and I tell somebody, hey, if you take your two and I put my two together and we come up with five, I'm an idiot. Like I'm not a mathematician. I'm a person that doesn't know math. Now, can, is there any existence where I can add two to another two and get five? No, because that doesn't exist. It's a rule that can't be broken. It's the same thing like this. If this is standing, it's because it stands... Well, we're missing one now. Somebody ate it. It stands on rules. It can't be broken. Our existence stands on, on limitations. It's how we know that we can send a man to the moon and bring him back safely because our universe doesn't operate randomly. It operates on laws. If there are laws that can't be broken, then there has to be a law maker. 
if there's something that's designed, there has to be a designer, right? Okay, so here's the cool thing about design, though. Here, listen up, listen up, because I want you to hear this. Design always points to a designer, right? I just said that. So now also, this is the part I don't want you to miss, design also always points to purpose, okay? If you design something, it's to fulfill a purpose. Like, you're all sitting in chairs because somebody designed a chair to sit in. We're all wearing shoes because we want to protect our feet, right? So the things that have been designed are for a reason and a purpose, which means if everything in this world has been designed, what were you designed for? What's your purpose? Okay, so to answer that question, I want to talk about Genesis 1, uh, verses 26 to 27. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the, the fish and of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Man and our male and female, he created them. So we see that God created man as a reflection of who? Himself, right? But in that, he gave us the ability to reason and love. And then he gave us a job. He gave us dominion over his created world to mimic his dominion over creation. That's pretty cool, isn't it? We were made in his image. So you see, just like Adam, we were made to reflect God's greatness. And just like the rest of all creation, we were made to bring him glory by putting him on display. Okay, John 15, 35 says, Already you are clean because of the world that I have spoken to you. Abide in me of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So as a redeemed follower of Christ, as a, as a Christian, we know that our main purpose is to be loved by our Creator, our Savior, and to love, or to be loved by our Creator, our Savior, and to love Him in return. But it's also clear that He has things that He intends for us to do. Ephesians 2 says it like this, for, for we are His worksmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So before things were even created, started, God had a plan and a purpose for you to, to walk out and live out and do. He had good things for you to do. Back to the purpose thing, I wanted to point out, you never walk, like, uh, can we pull up the slide? You never walk by a house and say, man, that tree really fell into place, do you? Because that, again, would be as ludicrous as saying 2 plus 2 equals 5. It's nonsense. Well, if you walk by a house and don't see that somebody has designed it for a specific plan and purpose, you're missing the point. You, like that tree didn't cut itself down, shave itself into lumber, and then construct itself, right? We are like this house for God. He has a plan and a purpose for us to fulfill and do, but he's building it. And for us... If we know that our purpose as a house is to put God on display for his glory, we have a great advantage in this world to understand our, who we are and what we do. When we know our God, we know our identity. Does that make sense? So here's the catch-22 that we just heard, though. Unless you are abiding in the vine, you can't create good fruit. I'm going to read it again so we don't miss it. So listen. So this is John 15. It says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So apart from Jesus, we can't accomplish anything on our own that has everlasting, eternal fruit. We can't do it. We're just a branch. But when we're plugged into the branch and we abide in him, what's cool is we can 
we, we see that we end up creating fruit that if we weren't abiding in him, we wouldn't be able to create. So by abiding in Jesus, we get to see fruit, okay? But what we experience is God moving in and through us to create that fruit. That's pretty cool, right? So here's the catch-22 of it all. He's planned for us to have to, to accomplish something. He's a, he has good things for us to do, to put him on display, put his glory on display, bring an eternal fruit, but we can't accomplish it without him. Do you see that? Okay, so the fruit, his purpose for, in, uh, his purpose for intending to create through, through us, just as a branch, he creates it through me, not only to experience him, but so does the world. So while I'm experiencing him creating fruit, patience, peace, love, when I, when I see that, I know that, you know what, when I'm not abiding in the vine, I don't create fruit. But when I abide in the vine, all of a sudden I create fruit. What's the difference maker? Jesus, right? But what is cool is other people that are watching around, they're like, man, that branch is creating fruit. Like, how did that happen? Like, it's supernatural. When we create supernatural fruit, it's not natural. So when people see, like, in Galatians 5.22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When you are creating these things supernaturally, when you love, when it's difficult, when you, when you show, when you show self-control, when you show peace in the midst of struggle and, and pain and, and trial, when you show patience, when your brothers and sisters are driving you bananas, like you're putting on a display, you're creating fruit that without Jesus, you're just going to re react like everyone else in the world, right? When you create, when when you respond in gentleness, when you respond in self-control, you guys are growing up in a world that knows none of these things because the world doesn't create this on their own. Does that make sense? Do you hear what I'm saying? When we abide in the vine, we create good fruit. But what happens is the rest of the world gets to see. And now here's the key. What was, our, what, what was the question we started with? Does anybody remember? Does God exist and can you prove it? The proof is you. You're the proof. Okay, so we can look at our surroundings and we can look at the creation and we can say, man, it would be, it, it would, it would be not smart to say that this was just shaken in a bag and happened on its own. To point and say that there is no designer that designed this would be foolish, right? But we can do that. But more importantly, when people look at your life and they go, what is, what is going on with you? How come you can love your enemy? How come you can uh, obey your parents? How come you can get along with your friends? How come you can, all the things that you, have, you can't do on your own, but you can do if you're abiding in the vine, then all of a sudden you have a testimony that goes, let me tell you about my God who's alive. And you know what? No one can, no one can contend with your testimony. When you are absolutely abiding in the vine, it's not a question of whether or not God exists. When somebody says, hey, can you prove to me that God exists? You're like, oh, let, me, let me tell you. Because my daily walk walks with a living creator, God. That's how you become a light for him. Does that make sense? So if you're wondering, if you are wondering if this question can be answered truthfully, where do you have to go? You have to go meet with the creator. You have to give him an opportunity. You have to give him a chance. If you give him that, I promise you, Jesus is in the business of melting minds. If you come with an open heart and an open mind, he's going to melt your mind. And if you abide in him, you're going to create supernatural fruit that can't be explained. I promise you that. And it's not my promise I give you. It's God's. That, my friends, is why I'm so passionate about introducing people to Jesus. If you've never asked Jesus to be your Savior, if you've never called on his name to forgive you for your sin, then it's impossible for you to abide in him because you have your sin standing in the way. You can't abide in the vine with sin. That's why Jesus came to die, to remove the sin. The Bible says it made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf. He took the sins of the world and died for them. If you believe that, then you will be saved. If you believe that, then all of the sin is removed. You are seen as righteousness, which means you can abide in Jesus. If you've never done that, 
I'm telling you, tonight's your night. If you're wondering whether or not God exists, this is the biggest crucible in your walk. If you, if you do believe, if you put your faith, if you, put, you, you believe in Jesus and you say, Lord, I do believe that you're real. I do believe that you've done the things that you said you're going to do, which is die on the cross and take my sins so that I don't have to. If you believe that, man, I'm telling you, you can start your walk with abiding in, in the Lord. If that is you, we're, gonna, we're about to break off into our small groups. Talk to your leaders about it. Talk, talk to somebody. Talk to me. Come ask me questions. I will walk you through that process. Because the discipleship process is amazing. Because as you walk, you experience a living God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for being a God that has promised um, to never leave us, never forsake us, to walk with us every day, Father, that you, um, you are not just a God that started this world uh, like a spinning top to watch it burn down, but you are very much involved with, um, with the things that concern me, which blows my mind, Father, that you can, you can create the stars, you can, you can, you, you, you've named each of them, and the, you say in your word that they, you hold them in the palm in your hand, but somehow, in the middle of all that, you can hold all that, but still care about the things that I care about. So, Father, I just, I, I thank you and I praise you for that, Lord. I pray that tonight, um, for those that may not know that, uh, that you are faithful, Lord, I pray that you would, you would reveal yourself as faithful to them tonight. And Lord, uh, for those that may not have put their trust and faith in you, Lord, I pray that they would be bold to take the steps to talk to somebody that can explain it to them in greater detail. Lord, I pray that you would uh, continue to uh, just love us as you love so well and protect us as you protect so well and to lead us as you lead so well, Father. We love you and man, do we need you. Amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today's video. Don't forget to like and share the video and to hit that subscribe button so you can stay connected. And even if you're able to, come join us on Wednesday nights at six o'clock. We'll see you guys next time.